Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I got these beautiful gourds from my sister. She has a green thumb and she uh, brought over a bunch the other day and I thought, you know, that would be really fun to maybe arrange some of these and uh, draw them for a little demonstration. And um, I also had a request, somebody wanted to use, wanted me to try out some um, Derwent charcoal pencils. And I don't have the Derwent charcoal pencils, but I do have the Derwent drawing pencils. And I think they are probably pretty similar. And you can definitely do the same techniques, even if they're not exactly the same. The charcoals might smudge a little bit more, but um, you'll still be able to get the same idea. So what I'm going to do is just kind of set these up. I really like this really warty, gnarly gourd there. So I'm setting it in front of me. Um, and I really like this this white one too. I'm going to set that one down. And I think I want one of these littler ones for scale. I think maybe this one, because the other two kind of have that more pear shaped. That way I'll get just a little bit something different. And I have that sitting right in front of me. Um, and what I'm going to do here is a little bit of sketching. So I'm going to start in, I actually have this full set or set of 24 of the drawing pencils. Um, so I am going to actually start in with this kind of cream or white color. This is actually wheat wheat, not white. And I'm going to draw the basic shape, this basic kind of pear shape of this gourd. It was funny, my, my first kids drawing class, I started a new session at the library and the first one I did gourds and I thought, oh, they're going to be, we had, the, I had these birdhouse gourds, they're all dried. I'm like, oh yeah, that'll keep them busy for an hour and a half, but they'll get all the details. I really have to look for the details. 10 minutes into the class, the kids were done drawing gourds and they're like, uh, what's next? I'm going to put the little stem here. And it's got a kind of a funky stem that wraps around. I just want to get that, get that sketched in there. And um, I can add some of the little bumpy textured warties on there. This one's not as bumpy as the, as the yellow one. So I'm just going and put a little bit of that in there. It's almost like we're making like a topographical map. I love the bumps though. They make it look so interesting, don't they? Kinda spooky, Halloweeny. Oh, gonna be Halloween soon. I'm kind of excited. My girls, we got we got the girls a karaoke machine. I've mentioned it before, and um, I love to sing. I'm terrible at it, uh, but I think it'd be so cool to have that. I'll have to see if I can find a Halloween karaoke. That'll be cool to have that going on. We have a little like impromptu gathering at our house on Halloween. Because, uh, you know, we all, my friends, we all have young kids. And so we all kind of go along with trick-or-treating together. I'm grabbing some uh, yellow ochre. And uh, so we all kind of gather and we do like a potluck. And because, you know, they want to go trick-or-treating right off the bat. So parents are getting home from work. And it's hard for them to like, you know, sit your kids down to eat when they just want to go get dressed up and go get handy. So we do a little potluck and the kids, you know, tear around my house for a while. And then we go on mosey on down the road to you know, go beg for candy. And um, so it's fun. I love getting together for Halloween. I love it because it's not like Christmas where you've got so many expectations or Thanksgiving where the expectations are so high. Halloween is just fun. And uh, I I love it. It's one of my favorite hol holidays. Um, all right. So I'm just drawing. This. this one is really bumpy. Let me just show you again. Look how bumpy that is. Okay. So we want to get those bumps in there. Um, so that's what I'm just kind of drawing, just drawing the uh, the bumps. I don't know what, <laughs> it gets brought up every time I do a drawing video that I say drawing funny, which I never, I never knew until I had a YouTube channel. It's like, really? Drawing? I'm drawing. So I didn't realize I said it all that weird. <laughs> and I've been a drawing teacher for a long time. <laughs> oh, I'm actually getting ready to go teach a class in a few minutes. Not a drawing class, a crafting class, a kid's crafting class. Yeah, but all these little bumps. I think why I started thinking about Halloween because I think of like a warty witches, you know. Look at these little nice groovy bumps on there. All right, so the next one's going to be smooth, and that's going to provide a lot of contrast, which is nice. So I'm going to start off with a circle because it's a very, it's the, the bottom of it's very round. Okay, so I got my circle. And then it's just got a little, a little point on, not a point, but like kind of like a little nub at the top. And it doesn't have a stem. I don't know what happened to the stem. Probably my nephew picked it and picked it close. And then I always think it's neat how these gourds, but it's almost like they've been dipped in paint, how they have that like very distinct line. So I want to put that in there. And then I think I'll draw the little uh, stripes. Just get that, uh, get that in there right off the bat. There. OK, 
Okay, I hope you're still with me, not too bored. All right, now the colors in this, uh, this set of pencils are not that bright. So um, I don't know if I'll go to other ones or if I'll just stick with these. I'm just gonna uh, stick with these for right now. And I wanna get something a little bit darker. So I'm going in with this uh, brown ochre and I'm going to put some shadows underneath the bumps that I have here. Actually, my paper's darker than that. So I better go one more step down. Let's go, let's see what this looks like. All right, so my paper is gonna be the mid value of everything. And so I'm going to add my shadows here with this. Uh, this is sepia, red shade. Actually, with charcoal, but I don't think these... Actually, these do smudge. I bet these do have a bit of charcoal. These are kind of like a Conte, Conte crayon or Conte pencil. I did get a couple Conte pencils. They were doing a promotion, and they were free. Um, if you liked them on Facebook, this was a while back. And I got my pencils, and I'll be darned if I knew what I did with them. I did use them for, like, a, a little bit, and they were pretty nice. I just wish I remembered. I bet they're, like, mixed in with my markers, because they used to be on that, can, that, uh, storage solution. They're probably there. Let's go around and put these darks in. And I think I'll use the same over here. This might be a little too red, though. You know what? I think I will go with a gray for that one warm gray which still is pretty light not as light as the highlights but I'm gonna add some shadow in here they're mostly lit from overhead because they're on my table where, where I do my videos so they've got mostly overhead lighting a little bit on this side there And I'm just going to bring that up into the gourd. I'm going to vary my pressure so I'm not pressing down so hard here. I just want to kind of tone it. And see if we can smudge that with our fingers a little bit. Yeah, it'll smudge out a little bit. It's not quite as smudgeable as chalk, but definitely more than colored pencil. Now I want to go into my white and add some highlights onto the bumps. Let's go in there. This is just a sketch after all. You know, you can spend hours on um, on a drawing with colored pencil or with charcoal. Charcoal? Oh my goodness. Who's from Maine? <laughs> go right in there. Add the bumps and the lumps. All right, I want to get that stem in there well now. And I got this green here, which is kind of... All these colors are really earthy. I like that. What's nice on this uh, earthy paper? This is Cants and Me Tints. Paper. I'm not even sure if they make these drawing pencils anymore. They sometimes come out with pencils and then discontinue them. But they're by Derwent. So if they still make them, that's where you'll find them. And I also learned that it's not Derwent, it's Derwent. Derwent. That just doesn't sound right, but apparently it is. They're a British company. And I'm so clearly an American. Uh, I'm just warming this up a little bit on the top. My dog is barking at high school bus. Not to fear. And then I also like this cream color, so I want to go back in a little bit more of that. Uh, the white, the white's a little stark for me. I'm debating what I want to use for a shadow on the um, on the table itself because it's going to be something that's going to go with my background paper. Otherwise, it's going to be like sticking out like a sore thumb. And I think I might add some of that blue into my shadow because oh, my shadow on this because it's just not dark enough for that gray. That gray is lighter in value than the uh, than the paper I used, so that's why that's not working out so well for me. How's that working for you, as Dr. Phil would say? Not so hot, Dr. Phil. I need to pick up my kids pretty soon. There we go. Oh, I like that a little bit better now. Yeah, that's not too shabby. Cause it's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of like creamy, grayish, yellowish. That's weird. It's weird. It's a weird gourd. It's a weird gourd. All right, a little of that. 
in there. I could use some different shades of gray, actually. Let's get, let's try some of the, what is this now? Oh, Salloway Blue. Well, la -de da That name sounds fancy. Well, it's fun to build up colors. I like working on a colored uh, background. I like painting white objects because they're just more interesting. They, you really have to look to find your colors and to find the values and the tones. So it just adds a an element of challenge. All right, I'm going to leave that the way it is. And I know I need a little bit more there. Uh, why don't I just go on and do that a little bit more now? I think I need to lighten that up a little bit. But I do want to get to the other gourds before we run out of time. There we go. And just to sharpen up my bumps here. Lumps and bumps. Get to have lumps and bumps. And the high highlights with white on the lumps and bumps. Those are kind of nice. They, they do blend a bit, but they're not really smudgy. I don't think they're going to smudge where I don't want them to smudge. All right, so this one here is super duper bumpy. Let me see what I have for a range of colors I can use on here. I'm not going to have anything as dark as the gourd actually is, but let's see. Is that the brown that I used? That's not the brown that I used. I think I'll do it all over in this, though. Kind of a nice and neat middle, middle value. I probably should have... Maybe I should use my pastel pencils. I don't use those very often. Probably use them a little bit more. They just feel so dry, and not as like uh, like you know you work with a chalk pastel. It's dry, but it's very responsive and vivid. But the pastel pencils I have, I have a Derwent set, I have a Kimberly set, and I have a Van Gogh set, and I'm still or Generals, Generals or Kimberly, I'm not sure. Um, but they're they're just I don't know. I don't feel like I don't enjoy them as much as other mediums. So maybe I just need to practice them, practice with them a little bit. So obviously I like the way they they looked or I liked other people's artwork with them or something because otherwise I wouldn't have bought them. Although I am kind of a... I like to try new things. I like to try new products, so I could see I could have grabbed some of those because I was just curious. I think that's good to be curious. To, you know, try new things, try new products as you can afford them or as you get the opportunity to if you get a, you know, a present... I think the Derwent ones I got as a present, and the uh, I bought the Van Gogh ones. Those are discontinued. I, the Van Gogh pencils are all discontinued. They're not bad though. I have a set of the colored pencils, and I pretty much let the kids use them because I, they they're in a nice little container, and they can live underneath the coffee table for when anyone needs to color with them. I don't know reports. A couple little bumps. Have uh, have some not random. I would have uh, have some scale. Have some big bumps. Have some little bumps. You'll notice nature has a scale. You know, some bumps are big, some bumps are little. It just uh, makes it feel a little bit more realistic. And put some more of that in the stem. Yeah, I wish I uh, I kind of wish I chose a different media at this point, just because I wish I had something brighter. But it's gonna be fine. It's gonna look it's gonna look good when we're done. But I just you know it's kind of like oh hindsight. If I uh, if I had gone with a brighter pencil or a pastel, it would have it would have just been different. But that's all right. I'm full speed ahead now. There's no turning back. All right, nothing's gonna stop us now. All right, so now let's do this one over here, and I'm just gonna base in the bottom of the green. That guy flipped over on me. This guy right here flipped over. It's a Weeble Wobble! That's what the kind of gourd that is. It's the Weeble Wobblest gourd. They wobble, but they won't fall down. Wait a minute. This clearly falls down. Oh, there you go. Oh, standing up now. It's wobbling. It's wobbling. Is it gonna? Oh, it's, it's up now. Okay. I stand corrected. They, they're standing up before they were falling down. All right, I need that blue back. What do I do with that? There it is, because that's really dark, and I just need I need something to give me that value without changing too much of the character of it. Value is much more important than uh, than the color, I think, in the composition. If you have the values right, I think you're going to be good. If you get the color, you know, it's, if you don't have the right colors, as long as you have the value right, it's going to be believable. You think of all those Andy Warhol uh, portraits. 
done in crazy colors, but you know who they are and you can make out what they are because the values are accurate. And let's see, what am I, I'm going to have to use this again for my yellow because of the uh, unfortunate <laughs> lack of bright colors I have in this, in these materials that I chose to do this with. That's all right, with nice fall colors. Use what you got. You get what you get. You don't get, ex get upset, as Pinkalicious would say. All right, and then I'm going to add my little stripes here that are in the uh, gourd. And I want to do something to make that... Oh, I think I'll use this. I think I gotta have something in these columns up here. Let's, this is almost the color of the paper, actually, now that I look at it, isn't it? And then I need to brighten up those stripes, so I'm just gonna go in with this uh, wheat. I think it's wheat. Yep, it's wheat. Weedy. Uh, let's sketch that right in there. And this guy has no stem. I feel kind of sad for him. We'll just put its little anti-stem there. Its little little circle where its stem ought to be. All right. So now for a shadow, I gotta find something that's gonna work. Uh, so, and I and using this paper as a guide. Um, and looking at my little box. Oh, chalks. Nah, box of pencils. Let's see, that might be all right. This one right here, this uh, the sepia, we've already used it once, so it wouldn't be the end of the world to use it again. Um, and I can always layer on some blue if I need to. It'll knock out any orange that may be trying to uh, assert itself too much. I gotta really set my guys here so I get my get my shadows. Now I have the, uh, my, the, and I mentioned it before in another video to shoot my videos because I want to make sure that you have pretty good lighting. You can at least see what I'm doing. I have um, three lights over my workspace and then two of them, one to the left, one to the right, pointing at a 45 degree angle at my space and one is directly above pointing, in front of me pointing this way. So I've got really, I've got kind of three shadows to work with, but I'm trying to simplify that and just kind of stick to one shadow, kind of the one that's above and slightly behind. So we're getting a little bit of a forward shadow. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't want to have three shadows because I think that'll be a little confusing for you um, and for me too. It's just confusing to deal with that many shadows. If I was setting up a still life on purpose, I would... Um, I would have it off to one side or the other. I like a dramatic sh shadow, kind of like a charoscuro type shadow where you have like a, one side lit up very dark, very brightly and the other side kind of, uh, kind of falling into the shadows, falling into the darkness. Charoscuro. <laughs> I think I even said it right. Take that. <laughs> All right, now I'm just going to deepen up some of the, I, this, you know, there we go. <laughs> that was giving me some trouble. I don't like that. All right. And a little bit of this blue. I haven't even looked at the time. Look, oh, we got a minute and a half. We're cooking with fire. We're doing good. We're cooking with charoscuro. <laughs> oh, I used to teach art history. La -di da uh, And there, I think that's all right. So this is a nice little study of gourds. Um, a study, by the way, somebody asked me, is just basically a preparation, a little drawing or painting you do to get ready for doing larger painting or drawing. I hope you like this. I hope you found it um, informative. And um, I'm so sorry. I can't remember the, the lady who asked me for a demonstration in the chalk pencils. The You can do this in the chalk pencils. You can do it in pastel pencils. You can do it in colored pencils. You can do it with pastels or loose charcoal. Um, I would work on a medium tint. I would use charcoal and I would use a stick of chalk, white chalk too. So, you know, any mediums, try it out, have fun, do your best. And uh, no, I'm cheering you on every step of the way. I if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Check out all the other painting and drawing videos I have to offer. And um, if you subscribe, you'll get a notification every day when I post a brand new video. I want to thank you again so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.